Oh my god, I'm live! Can you guys hear me? Oh shit! We'll give it a second. I don't know what the quality is gonna be like, so... Let's give it a hot minute. Um, I should probably figure out how to add music. I don't know how to do that. I definitely don't know how to do that. Do 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 do. I just gotta figure something out here. I'm like learning as I go here. This is um interesting. This this this. Okay. Did that not? What? Yes. What? Hello? Okay, I can't see chat right now. Hold on. Chat? No, that's not it. I need to bring up, like, my Twitch chat, I think. Hi, Troy! Here to earn my 2,000 kitty bucks. Nice. How is the recording? How is it on Twitch? I have no idea. I'm streaming from a different platform. Uh, it's a podcasting platform. So it's a little bit different. Um, it says I need to close other tabs. Okay, hold on a second. I don't have other tabs open, bitch. It's okay-ish, not as good as Source. Hi, Chloe, how are you? But like, uh, let's see, quality. What if you put it at 1080? Did you try putting it at 1080? Like, I can change mine. It's kind of jumpy, but audio sounds good. I did? Oh, why is it jumpy, I wonder? Let's see, let me just check my... Perform oh, performance tab on my streaming PC. I mean, it seems okay, I think. I don't know. Producer has Riverside open in other tabs. Ask producer to... What? Why would I have to... Okay, that might be the reason why then. Okay. I don't understand. I thought I was able to join... Kyle, are you still there? It only shows I have one person now. Did you leave the lobby? You guys, we're having a podcast with Kyle today. Oh, what? It doesn't... Okay, so we are streaming on Twitch right now. It says waiting for a host. People. Oh, I see. I see you in the lobby now. Okay. So you're in the lobby. Now, why can't I... I don't understand why I can't add the producer like I thought. That's fucking weird. I'm gonna try it one more time. Hold on. Producer. Copy. Plop it in my messenger just to see, because I like being able to see my feed here. But I might have to do it a different way. I don't know. Make sure I don't have any other browsers open. Just this one. You're about to join Probin as a producer and will not be recorded. That's the point. Okay, continue. Waiting for a host to accept. Uh, okay, admit. Producers are not recorded. Okay. I think... I kind of have that what I need, and then now, can I pop this out? Yeah. So now I can look at my Twitch chat and stuff over here. Okay, how we doing? How are we doing? 
what is up kyle is here with me we're gonna add him so i'm starting a new podcast i'm trying anyways i <clears throat> really wanted to talk to other creators um because sometimes I feel like being a content creator sometimes is lonely, as weird as that sounds. Like, of course, we're surrounded by amazing people all the time, but, like, not everybody considers themselves a content creator or a full-time content creator. So I just want to talk to other creators, big and small, about what inspires them, you know, like, what made them want to start, like, really just their own creative journey and i think that's a really cool way to connect with people and i feel like that'll be a fun topic to share uh, hopefully we can talk about fun things have some laughs along the way that would be great that would be great hi ninjet how are you can you hear me okay like what does it sound like kyle what does it sound like does it sound okay now I think I had something messed up. That little meme photo I posed in the Guardians this morning may have got me banned for three days from Facebook and Messenger. It's really the only thing I shared anywhere. Tokyo, that's kind of crazy. Yeah, sure. What does that mean? Yeah, sure. It sounds good or it sounds like trash. Hopefully the recording is fine. I don't know. Okay. Okay. So, let's bring Kyle in. Bada bing, bada boom. We're a podcast now sometimes. <laughs> it worked. It says, Kyle has Riverside open in other tabs. Make sure you only have one tab, please, Kyle. Sorry about that. I don't. It's just this one. I do notice it stretched the resolution a little bit on, on uh, it's Twitch. It? Yeah. Like, see how it's all shrunken now? Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait. Okay, so my... I'm not caught up on my Twitch. Like, my mon my um thing is lagging. Oh, so we're not a square. I probably had to adjust, like, the output settings or something because we were cropped before. Like, right now, the, w the way we're looking at it we are cropped into like little squares. Can I change this like midstream? Permissions denied. <laughs> General. No, it's denied. Denied. Advanced. Cause that's, how do I change the view? Y'all. First podcast Sorry. problems. Yeah, first, first podcast problems. Hello. Alex, how are you? Hi, Odu, Alex. Okay. Do you have a headphone between your titties right now? Uh, maybe. <laughs> That's a good place to keep it so I don't, like, yank it on anything. Because I have... I'm actually listening to music in my other ear because I feel like I need background music all the time. I don't know why. It literally makes me more productive. It's that same stupid disco song, too. Just saying. <laughs> Uh, okay. Trying to keep an eye on chat at the same time, but let's see. I don't understand. Okay, so I think for the live stream, I think we're kind of stuck with this, to be honest, because... Hmm. I feel like I don't have the option to change the way it looks. I thought I would, but... Maybe maybe you have to do it prior to going live. Also. Maybe. Recording overview. I mean, oh. it's fine for now. It is fine for now. Absolutely. Can I, like... I can't move anything. I'm just trying to see if it'll, like, do something different, but it won't. So, anyways. Anyways, here we are. My army boss would definitely vibe and be interesting for your podcast. His channel is getting some views lately. Oh, what do you mean? What does he do? What does he play? Like, maybe that could be up for discussion at the end of this, too, but... My son and I did a radio show for nine years every Saturday morning on a community radio station. As long as you are passionate for the subject matter, 
others will be attracted to consume and share. Thank you, Mako Dave. Um, like I said, I want to talk to creators. Like that's, that's that's I don't know. I explained it in the beginning. I'm not gonna repeat myself. I'm really good at repeating myself though. All right, Kyle. This is Kyle Williams, by the way, of Boosted Lifestyle. Kyle, how many uh, subscribers do you have on YouTube? Now, uh, two hundred twenty-five thousand, something like that. Dang. That is my main, my main thing that I do. Is your YouTube? Yeah. Okay, it's it's kind it... of like in a low spot right now, just because I haven't been pushing it as as much lately. I've kind of just been vibing, but you mm -hmm. know, we'll get back there. Okay. Uh, what inspired you to start your YouTube channel originally? Like, was it always called Boosted Lifestyle? What made you wanna? What made you it wanna was... start that? Are Are you getting questions from Chat GTP right now? Just shut your, shut your. Face. <laughs> I told you that. I know. A... I told you I was. <laughs> um. So. Uh, to start, <laughs> the the name of the channel was actually Super Williams because I had a Super at the time. Mm -hmm. um, essentially, how I started it was I, I was watching YouTube and I was just watching how other people were growing and progressing on YouTube. And I was like, that isn't that hard. I could do that, too. So I started doing the same thing. And YouTube was a little bit different animal back like five, six, seven years ago. And the fact that growing a channel wasn't as difficult as it is now. Mm. So when I started, it was actually a little bit easier to grow um, compared okay. to now. But yeah, I just I just decided one day that I was like, I can do that. But and like... I, was in, I was in it for a rude awakening, actually, actually when I started <laughs> making videos and then I realized that like, oh, I really can't talk to the camera because I'm camera shy. And I actually had to like voice over everything that I did. So I would like film it and then I would like write my little script notes and like go yeah. inside and like voice it over. And mm. like, as I was voicing it over, my heartbeat was like pounding and everything. Like <laughs> I, I couldn't even talk to the camera that nobody was even looking into just knowing that I had to like talk to a camera. It was like a little bit mm -hmm. frightening. So that was how many years ago you said like, it's gotta be at least six years ago now. Okay. So comparatively, I guess six years ago, not even being able to voice over, um, something you pre-filmed in your own garage <laughs> yeah. to going to like, obviously I get to experience this with you now, but I, Kyle would literally whip out a camera anywhere and like talk into it as if he was talking to somebody, uh, like no shame at all. Just saying. So I feel like that in itself, like to be able to reach that point must be so freeing because you don't like you probably literally don't care and i know there are creators that are literally in a chokehold for public filming do you know what i mean yeah well and then like growing up i just wasn't a social person so i didn't know how to like talk to people or hold a conversation or anything and and mm -hmm. even to this day i still struggle with that like I know mentally when someone asks me something, I should be like, oh, I should ask you something back. But instead, I'm just like, yeah, cool. That's what I do. <laughs> so I I, I'm, I'm still really bad at conversations, but the mm -hmm. the whole creating a YouTube thing and getting over that struggle kind of segued into me being a little bit more social and better talking to people. That's true. I guess you're kind of like forced to meet people because not only are you making content, but you are presenting yourself as a person and people attach themselves to, to content you know what i mean in that sort of fashion so people want to meet you and when you go to track days and when you go to these places um people talk to you yeah it's, it's <laughs> or they still recognize catches, you right yeah it still catches me a little bit off guard when someone approaches me and they're like hey i watch your youtube i'm like i don't i don't know really what to do so i'm like uh thanks, awesome thanks, <laughs> thanks. i mean of course you're, you're I, thankful I know. but yeah it's funny because they obviously know way more about you than you might know about them, depending on who they are, I guess. True. Mm. It's always like, are you the YouTube guy? I'm like, <laughs> yeah, it's my face. True. Okay. Do you remember what the first video was you posted on YouTube? Uh, so I started with a series, but it might have been slightly after I started a couple like montage videos because of car meets so i started videos oh, like okay. where i would go to car meets i would just take like a couple little clips and kind of like edit it together in like a cool like montage edit style thing like three to five minutes mm -hmm. my first ever series was the lifetime supra build so essentially i had blown up my supra basically i cracked the ring, ring land on one of the cylinders and then um the i started taking it apart 
Like, I had to pull the engine out of the car and stuff, and that's when I started my first series. Okay. And I, and I'm, I don't know why I attached myself to series so much, but I, I think that's one of the things I want to change when I finally get back to doing what I consider, like, a full-time YouTube thing is... Because okay. right now, I'm, j I'm just, like, every three, five week, that's when I upload now. It's, like, once a week, maybe. But when I get back into it, it's going to be a whole different style of content in the in the fact that I'm going to try and do like a whole build in one video, compact it, make it like the best 20 minute video that you've ever seen that okay. I've ever made. And I think that's where my next direction is. And that's where YouTube is moving as a whole. Obviously, with all these platforms, TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, whatever it is, they all have their algorithm for a certain amount of time. Then it evolves and change. And, and if you don't evolve and change, you're going to get left behind. Also, also very true. So... How many projects do you expect to finish in, like, a one-month span, though? Like, I, I guess I'm just genuinely curious about what kind of projects fit in that kind of posting schedule for you. Yeah, so I think I'm going to do uh, less of, like, a whole car build. And it's going to be more like, oh, okay. you know how I did, like, the trike, the little trike build? That was fun. I enjoyed mm -hmm. that. I might try doing some other stupid stuff. Like, I, one I've seen that I really want to conquer is the world's fastest garbage can currently... Is 62 miles an hour. Garbage can? <laughs> garbage just... can. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, like our stand-up garbage can outside. Yeah. Basically, the guy put it on three wheels. He put an engine on it, and he went 62 miles an hour in it. So oh I kind of want to take that record, and that's been on the back of my mind. It's just we're obviously limited for space where we mm -hmm. are right now. So, mm -hmm. And it's race season. The cars, priority number one, even if it doesn't create YouTube content because it's personal fulfillment happiness. And then after that. Okay. Interesting. What's your favorite video you ever made, though? Uh, favorite? Or would it be a series that would be a favorite? That's a tough one. I think, like, obviously you want to, to correlate whatever one does best as your favorite. But I think I had the most fun putting the eight turbos on the Mustang. And it, Go ahead. Oh, it's just not like... We, we kind of ruined those turbos, and I kind of want to do it again, but it's just the cost of getting eight turbos is never an easy task. So, okay, so I guess the next question is, what made that your favorite project? What, it, what it, made that your favorite? It's so different, and it's so easy to correlate my name with a car that has eight turbos on it. <laughs> because and, it's and that was just like... Lifestyle? <laughs> yeah, it was just like, look at this thing. Nobody else is going to make this. I, it's super unique in itself. Mm, this is true. Um, hmm. This is definitely different than the Fortnite content we usually make. This is make. definitely way different <laughs> than our Fortnite content. So, um, the eight turbo Mustang. Yeah, that's what he. That's what he said. So. Um. Also, be, because the, we'll just go back and forth on this because you know. We're going to talking to each other. Have you come up with an official name for the podcast? Well, this podcast is supposed <laughs> to be about me asking you questions. Uh, but when I started the podcast, before I invited you to the lobby, I kind of gave a little spiel. And I don't know if I actually told everybody the name. I'm going to be calling it Probing with Gina. I did write it. I think the title of the stream is How About a Podcast Probing with Gina. Mm -hmm. Um, and the noti was probing with Gina and Kyle. So um, I'm pretty sure, I'm 99% <laughs> sure I'm going to be calling this thing probing, which is because I was looking for um, uh, basically a synonym for interview. And I don't even know how I stubble, stumbled on like probe. I can't even remember. And I don't know why it didn't just like hit me in the face before. Uh, but I was like, oh shit, that totally makes sense. I have a <laughs> license plate that's literally probing. And it's like, you're probing questions. I mean, it's obviously just a casual probe here. It's not anything crazy. But it just definitely very fitting for me. <laughs> Alien recycle kitty? Nah, we trashed around here. Come on. <laughs> recycle kitty? Mm-hmm. Uh, this, I feel like it might be an interesting question. What's something your viewers might not know about you, but is important to who you are as a creator? I can do a backflip. As a creator? <laughs> that, there's little... Okay. Uh, 
that you that's can, my you final can do statement. A backflip. This is true. He can also yeah. do a backflip in a Power Rangers costume. Also true. That is also true. I've seen it on film. But as a creator, though, is there anything that viewers might not know about you? Um, a lot of people don't know that I actually went to automotive school. I went to automotive school for like three years, so that definitely helped with like my background of what I'm doing currently. Um, and then on top of that, I actually known a lot for fabrication, but I never did do any schooling or anything for fabrication. It was kind of like I just started tinkering. That's what I'm best at is just, well, that's what I feel like I'm best at is just going out and tinkering and doing stuff. So mm -hmm. my method of learning how to do something is just, I have to do it in order to learn. I'm really bad at like watching a YouTube video <laughs> and learning how to do something that way. I have to sure. physically like touch something, mess it up, screw it up in some way, fail at it in order to learn that way. So which is kind of weird. But yeah, a lot of people don't know that I actually went to automotive school, and then a lot of people don't know that I didn't do any sort of fabrication schooling. Oh, okay. So basically, the thing, what were we doing the other day, though? Like, even though, <clears throat> excuse me, <coughs> a little bit of cock in my throat, uh, <laughs> but um, even though you don't have the actual certification and your technical training is minimal. I do find that you are very mechanically inclined otherwise. You know what I mean? Like, um, uh, is there a disappointment or failure? I, I only want to talk about this part briefly, and then we'll talk about the opposite of that. But, like, is there a disappointment or failure in something creative that you've done that was, like, a turning point for you? Uh, I don't know specifically something that kind of like I failed at it and it benefited me in some way. Like, I don't know anything specific like that. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I don't know how to answer that question wholeheartedly. Okay. And I feel like that's, I guess maybe you don't perceive any of it as failing and just learning. That's okay too. You know what I mean? That's because technically the eight to if you look at it this way, technically the eight turbo Mustang didn't actually work well. Correct? It didn't. That no. Yeah. So there's definitely things that I like learn and you can make a twist on it and figure out why it didn't work. Mm -hmm. um, like learn for, something from it for sure. Yeah. So for example, the eight turbos, we learned that like when you put that many turbos on a car, sometimes the pressure from one turbo actually wants to go out the other turbo and then it doesn't work so well so <laughs> so do you think if you had put like check valves this is like a technical question i suppose but <laughs> do you think if you do it again you'll like add check valves or put in those preventative measures to prevent those little things i don't you think noticed? per se i would have put in check valves but i think wow. we were out of the efficiency range of that specific turbo oh um, i see it was like yeah so it just something? yeah it would just blow out the other turbos i see okay interesting Okay, so on the flip side of that, does that mean that the 8 Turbo is, like, your favorite accomplishment? Or what is your favorite accomplishment? Not a project, but as a creator, I guess. Could be title, mm. status, um, a well, moment, an event. <laughs> as I'm looking up, like, I, I can't avoid the 100,000 subscriber plaque because that is, like, mm, true. as... as this little tiny piece of like cardboard thing that probably cost them a dollar fifty to make like it has so much <laughs> meaning behind it because of, of the effort to get there um and and like i don't want to downside like i want how am i going to phrase this we're we're in like far north canada so the ability to uh, make content and collaborate and do whatever else on YouTube is actually very, very limited. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I don't want to put a crutch on my YouTube career, but like, I feel like I'm held back a little bit just because I can't go to certain events. I can't meet certain people. I can't get in other people's videos. I can't collaborate with these other people just because we're so far north. Yeah. We definitely my, don't live down the street. Yeah. And my specific style of content relies heavily on it being nice outdoors. Um, 
And for half of the year, we're actually indoors because it's winter time. Like, <laughs> yeah, and you can't race cars in the winter here. <laughs> yeah. So. Mm -hmm. so there's a little bit of a crutch like in my YouTube career, but the fact that I've overcome a lot of that and I still got the 100,000 subscriber plaque, is it's really meaningful to me. So that alone makes it all worth it, really. Do you feel like once you smashed through that milestone, because I feel like it took... I think we were together for a few years before you hit the 100,000, right? Yeah. I think. And then once you hit 100,000, though, you're, like you said, you're almost at, you're nearing 300,000 now, right? And I feel like well, that was such a fractional amount of time compared to, to yeah, get to 100,000. It definitely escalates a little bit more. I'm at like 225 now, so I've like doubled it. But mm. it, it, like the whole algorithm change is, and especially with the, the inclusion of shorts on YouTube, Right. The whole algorithm change is now catered to the specific piece of content that you put out and not um, who you are, basically. Okay. So, so because, yeah, because the algorithm works for the specific piece of content and it doesn't just show all your subscribers your piece of content anyways, like the fact that you have 225,000 subscribers and most of them have notifications turned on, YouTube will not send a lot of those people notifications if the video isn't relevant to them. Really? That yeah. I didn't know. Is yeah, that so, like something somebody has proven though? Or is this yeah, just... Yeah, it's, it's definitely like out there in the algorithm space. Oh, okay. Yeah, so not, like, for example, if you upload a video, um, sometimes look at the notification like two or three days later, just because the algorithm tries to push it then. Interesting. Yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely gotten a little bit weird. And that's why the switch from like daily vlogging, uh, those videos don't do as well. But the 20 minute video of a whole project coming together from beginning to end and the watch time for that 20 minutes, that is really specific to the YouTube algorithm now. Okay, interesting. Yeah. I just didn't know if there was like a, you know what I mean? You do kind of one style of content and you stick to that and that's what your people do. But like me, when I go to YouTube, unless I'm specifically searching for something, I don't watch long form videos on YouTube <laughs> unless it's like a 49 minute remix of disco tracks that I'm obsessed with right now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, but then the, on the flip there side not of that, there's other forms of content that still exist and flow through like just a different channel of the algorithm. Do you know what um, I mean? Well, like just from my point of view and watching uh, channels that I've seen and the subscribers that they have. And like, I, I kind of, keep a loose idea of the views that the channel gets on specific content. Okay. It seems like the vloggy style content is actually dropping off some. So if people oh. had a hundred thousand views per video for the last three months or whatever, it's actually tapering down to like 90, 80, 70,000 per view, like oh, okay. video now. And then they're really pushing all this content that is like long form video in a short term video put up basically. <laughs> So basically more condensed, I suppose, like more condensed information and like yeah. a, a, literally a beginning and an end with a purpose, not just. Yeah. So you of... know how like uh, Mark Rober, for example, makes his videos. No, I have no idea who that is. Oh, okay. He, he was like an ex, uh, he's like an engineer, ex NASA employee, like huge on the internet. I'm sure if you've seen his face, you probably understand some of his videos. Maybe. I have no idea. I don't know. <laughs> uh, okay, so speaking of collabs, who, mm -hmm. if you could collab with anybody, who would it be? Uh, and okay, why, Okay, so um, specifically in the automotive world, there's probably like a hierarchy of uh, content creators. Um, Cletus McFarlane being the obvious top one in the automotive world. Okay. Um, so I actually met him down when we were down there on Sick Week. Um he owns the Freedom Factory, which is like a racetrack down in Bradenton, Florida. Okay. Um, I would love to do something with them, uh, be in one of his races or whatever, but that that's a whole other step away. And then um, a couple other ones that I do know of that like, I contact on a regular basis, just we're so far away. Um, Evan Shanks is down in Texas. I would love to do something with him. Um, and then Motion Auto TV is also down in like Colorado. And it'd be okay. cool to meet up with them too. So is there like different projects you'd want to do with them? Or is it oh, all kind of in the same line or what? Oh, sorry. And zip ties and bias plies. 
Mr. What Pegleg about Dee Dee's Beach Up? And I, Dee Dee's I want to go up. see Dan and Danny. So, I, I didn't even think about local, but like, technically, Zip Ties and Bias Plies is probably the closest one to us, even though it's like a eight, nine I, hour trip. I know, but I prefaced my question with like, anybody, implying yeah. that like, if you could literally pluck anybody from a list, big or small, like, okay, or yeah, well, or whatever. Okay, yeah, well, Cletus being the top of that list, only because his contact specifically relates to my content it's like racing and modifying cars and stuff oh, and okay. then to be a dickhead uh i'd like to go see peg as it passes by spies <laughs> which we should go do that sometime soon and we then should, I'd, love, anyways, but... I'd love to see dan and danny at dd speed shop me too i really would um i'm really also good at like losing a question even though i had one in my head <laughs> That's okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, and I'm sure as the podcast roll along, it's going to become more natural and less like stiff. And Yeah, absolutely. I mean, obviously we want the questions to kind of flow into each other and just the responses to obviously come naturally and not forced. Yeah. And, and I know, I understand that this is like a YouTube, well, it's, it's like a, a content creator back and forth. Um, But you feel free to like branch out into whatever it doesn't. What do you mean? You don't, have to, you don't have to specific target about my content career. You can branch out and talk about whatever. Because like, we play Fortnite. We do whatever. Oh, we play yeah, games. yeah. Like, I was going to get there too, though. Yeah. I just like, okay, assuming that nobody in my chat knows who you are. Okay. <laughs> yes, so of, of course. Yes. Somebody watching this video right now doesn't know who the fuck you are. So we're telling them. Okay. Gotcha. So your name is Kyle Williams. <laughs> you started your YouTube channel with a Supra. Um... True. Why why don't you talk about the progression of your channel actually and where you like ultimately see it or like where you see yourself being the happiest I guess so um, start from the beginning and progress Oh we're starting from the beginning Let's well, well we like, started, you said Supra Yeah we started with the Supra so we we started with the Supra and I started modifying it slowly um I've had some bad influences or good influences I don't know but we modified that Supra from being the awesome reliable daily driver that it was and put a giant turbo on it put a cage in it some big tires and new suspension and it ended up making this race car that was beautiful and gorgeous and fun to drive but i really couldn't drive it on the street it was more uh, dedicated to the track hmm. um and then the content kind of like tapered off because then i can only make so much content with the one specific vehicle so I acquired that other Mustang, uh, the one that I ultimately crashed afterwards, um, to start my fabrication career. So I had a, a, a weird situation where um, I didn't know how to fabricate, so I sent my car to a shop. Um, I'm not saying anything bad about the shop because it was definitely an ex-employee and stuff, but like I just felt like it was really hard to get fabrication work done on my car. So it was like months okay. and months and months, and it was like not getting work done, and uh, I just got frustrated that I had to bring my car eight hours out of town and then the fabrication work didn't get done on it. So I was like, I'm just going to learn how to do this myself. So then I don't ever have to deal with this again. Okay. But I didn't want to start fabricating on my own car because it was beautiful and gorgeous. So I bought another car, which is where the budget turbo LS build started to coming into play, which okay. is the second series on my channel. Um, that one's got like a total millions of views among the videos that's because an ls swap into a mustang is probably like one of the most popular yeah <laughs> car and mod it, videos maybe <laughs> and it's like way overdone now like the mm. market for that is like super saturated which gotcha. is why we segue into my newest build and it's actually a hemi into a mustang but uh getting past that so i, I wanted to learn how to fabricate just so i didn't have to deal with anybody else mm. uh but like i said the car was too nice for me to fabricate on that one so then I bought another Mustang, which was a uh, New Edge Mustang. Um, it had like a, a V6 in it that we put like 200 shot of nitrous on to try and blow it up. And it backfired and caught on fire. And... Oh my god. <laughs> Anyways, we took that engine out. We put the LS in it. And I started learning how to fabricate on that. And looking back on it now, like my fabrication was horrible back then compared to what it is now. But obviously you've got to get that experience in order to progress. And mm -hmm taking my audience on the journey with me over this uh, budget turbo LS build, I think is what helped grow it so rapidly then. Um, so we, we progressed through that, uh, ended up crashing that car. Mm -hmm. uh, you helped me actually get the next race car. 
I did which, actually. Which we, <laughs> which my fabrication skills were a lot better then. So we swapped everything from the crashed car into the new car, um, which is right around the time I actually partnered up with uh, Nick at Black Sheep and True North right. Turbos. Um, so then we've gotten a bunch of nice parts in that car. Uh, that car actually went really fast. It actually went way faster than I've made it go with this new engine that I put in it. Um, and uh, basically, the content from here on out has just been racing. But I feel like you got to do stupid stuff in order for the channel to grow. So up to that point, it was just basically all racing and fabrication then we did the eight turbo Mustang build and that blew up like on everything. Like I, yeah, I noticed my socials so ridiculous, on, right? Yeah. Like <laughs> TikTok and Instagram and Facebook and YouTube, like everything raised with the eight turbo build. Uh, we did that over the winter. We smoked the turbos in the spring. Couldn't run it in the spring with the eight turbos on it. Took the eight turbos off, put the single turbo back on. And it seemed like it flatlined again. So you get all these people in to your channel, you get all these subscribers, and then once you have the subscribers, it's like you have to keep doing dumb stuff or it kind of just flatlines again. So we bought the Civic. We put four turbos on the Civic. Once again, it blew up all over the internet again um, just to show that like dumb stuff makes good content. Um, and then in between doing the Mustang and the Civic, I would make regular content that just really wouldn't do well. So, out of my experience in YouTube, you've got to do dumb shit, or you've got to be, like, really good looking or funny. I feel <laughs> like being to... really good luck looking only gets you so far, though. I feel, I honestly feel like, um, I, I'm just gonna tell you what I see, I guess, from a third person looking Sure, at yes, Because I, I technically came into your channel, like, secondary, but what I see as a whole is a guy who is curious is learning things, trying things, and you're very genuine about your mistakes, about what you're learning, about like what you do and don't know. I feel like people like that and people like seeing other people try stuff and fail because they're not trying it. They're not, you know what I mean? Like yeah. they can watch you do it in 20 minutes instead of going out and trying that dumb shit themselves. You know what I mean? So it, does everything need to be dumb per se? No, no but, but also experimental i feel like is good like what would happen if i did this let's what's our yeah. hypothesis here and, you know? and i've actually noticed that it's it's uh more uniqueness it mm. the more unique you are i think the the better the content is so as of lately i did like the lawnmower thing that did really well i did the f1 card that did really well it's it's a shame that my passion is in racing and going out racing and having fun because that content never does as well and I kind of put like these other projects on the back burner that are doing really well, but that's just like in my nature, in my heart. Um, I don't need to have a million subscribers like per se. And I'd rather have fun than be stuck doing something I don't like doing all the time True. and be super successful. If that makes sense. So like how could you make, could you, sorry, not make, because you can't make it because you're always trying to work with the algorithm, of course. Mm -hmm. But like, do you think there are things you could do to make racing? Like, do other people have racing content do good? Or is it just one of those things that never does good for anybody? Or um, do you know what I mean? I feel like if I mixed my stupid ass ideas with my racing ideas, like if I actually went out and raced a Turbo Mustang, it might convert better. Mm -hmm. But because we have mustangs with ls's in them like a million other people do it's just like okay it's bottom tier shelf content you like you're having fun and we like seeing your perspective of it but you're not doing anything different so eat a dick i i wonder if there is a way for us to so maybe it's not a video that you like record edit and upload because you're saying that these videos don't normally do good. What if we actually figured out a way to live stream it for ourselves on your channel? Like, and only left it as like a live stream thing. Do you know what I mean? Because then you don't have to do any additional work technically when you get back. Um, and Are you also... talking like at the racetrack? Yeah. Oh, uh, a lot of times the racetracks are in a secluded area and the service is shit. 
that's like there there might be options though like say money's no issue in this conversation for just for sake of what you might do creatively would it be an option then if you knew you could pay a, a subscription fee for a good internet and live stream it from the track would you do you think maybe that would do good i mean I probably could, I but then on top of that, you probably need someone dedicated to the live stream as well. Well, absolutely. Because you don't want some be. dickhead walking around with a camera that looks like this the whole time, shaking. No, but I mean, we know some people, and you could say, listen. We're really bad literally... at holding cameras, by the way. Tokyo, damn. <sighs> but they're also free camera <laughs> free. holding people, so uh, thank you so much, Tokyo and Dan. I, oh, oh, Anybody I appreciate who ever them. holds a camera for us, <laughs> thank you so much. Um, but the option is to actually have somebody who's familiar with the camera and pay them for a day of holding the camera. Like, literally, that's it. Like, try and get the important stuff, try and leave out, you know what I mean? Like, obviously, there's True. aspects of privacy and discretion, but, um... That also I mean? might like, be something, like, I should look into for myself, actually. Like, speaking of taking the load the off garage. myself... But, like, maybe not even the filming part in the garage, but the editing part of it. Because how you put something together, I'm just not good at, like, self-directing, if that makes any sense. Like, putting an edit together. Like, you know when Rydney edited your videos, they looked a lot better than when I edited your videos. It's that might help retain audience better, which also might help you boost in the YouTube algorithm, if that makes sense. Mm. I, I mean... I, I personally do feel like, because editing is not my strong point, I literally, it's like pulling teeth for me. Like, I love having the final product and I want it to be edited well, but I don't want to be the one to do it because I am much better spending my time trying to create something else to be edited or whatever. You know what I mean? So True. I I definitely think it's it's worth the effort. You would just have to... The thing for me that I find, and maybe you can speak to that, we kind of talked about, like, just hiring an editor. Like, just find one, because they're everywhere. But I feel like if you can't... If if what you're asking for doesn't fully connect with them and they give you something that you kind of hate... Like, I, I'm True. afraid of that, I think. There, there's got to be I mean? definitely, like, a, a collaboration between you and your editor, for sure. Yeah. And yeah. the right person's out there. And I, I, it's funny because I literally just had this conversation with Nick. Nick is my partner in Truno Turbos and Black Sheep Industries where I was like, Nick, you could, like, you're a singular person running this company because like, I'm just like the marketing guy or whatever. And Nick does like all the sales and, and whatever. Mm-hmm. I was like, Nick, you're a singular guy. There's only so many hours in the day and only so far you can take like – you can only grow the business as big as you are physically yourself. You have Absolutely. to have another person in order to double it what past you're doing. Your own abilities, yeah, right? exactly. And I mm-hmm. think I might be stuck in that kind of like limbo thing where like the YouTube channel can only be taken as far as my singular abilities is, um, without adding like an additional person. So like an editor, I think would be a good one to find. It also might be good to find like an apprentice person. Like if we lived in an area where we had someone looking to get into YouTube and they just wanted to be like, Hey, I'm going to come learn from you. That that'd be something I'd be interested in too. Or even mm, hiring like an extra like a, set of hands basically. Yeah. Or even like hiring an extra set of hands might be a smart thing to do. Somebody who who's willing to learn to fabricate or build stupid shit or like just interested in, in becoming a YouTuber themselves. Oh, uh, I wasn't really going to engage with chat, but I do see that Dan is here. Hello, Dan from DD Speed Shop. DD Speed Shop. Maybe I should get Dan and Danny on here one day, too. I you dream should. of having an editor, but I hear it's almost just as much work to get what you want. Well, the thing for me is I kind of stumbled on an editor through another streamer that I watch. Kyle's like, oh, Hippie's editor is so good. You should just ask him who it is. Like, just ask him. Mm -hmm. So I asked Hippie and he told me right away and he's like, yeah, reach out to him and see if he's taking work. So I did work with him for like three or four weeks and it was amazing. Like, I've had, I had another editor and he was great too, but the thing that really sold Remy for me, like my fingers are crossed for someone like Remy or better, (laughs) but like, he basically took it on himself to go through the clips on my channel that myself or chat had made, made me like three to five clips a week. And then I would just give him a video, like my body paints video. 
and we kind of discussed and I showed him previous examples and it was very communicative and I basically got what I want every time and I was so happy because I wasn't having to do it. It cost me money, like it was definitely a pretty penny, but it was worth it for me in time, like my time. I don't have to struggle with this. I can give it to somebody who it's their strong suit. You know what I mean? Like, why not pay them for that? That's that's kind of my opinion. I should do the same thing for my laundry, but you know, <laughs> it's not yeah, my Dan, strong suit. Dan either. and Danny are the ones who are like, yeah, we Danny just have someone else do our laundry. Really yeah. <laughs> so we need to find a person like that as well. I think so. There's like a long list of things that we need to hand off on other people because we just don't have the time to do it now because our time is better spent making content than it is. Yeah, absolutely. And for me, like, I, this isn't about me, but. I find sometimes I struggle with overwhelm because we are like handling so much stuff that sometimes it feels just like a pile of laundry. It just feels like a pile of stuff to get through. And I have very bad avoidance procrastination <laughs> tendencies yes. and I'm aware of it. I'm trying to work on it, but sometimes like it's just so, f I don't know. I don't even know how to explain it. So like, do you have those moments? Or is it just a thing where you push through, like, I'm on medication for this shit well, now. I, I don't even I know could, if it's doing much. I could 100% just sit down and, like, look at my phone or watch a video or something and not do something. Mm -hmm. But then when I reminisce on it, I'll feel like an asshole. I feel mm -hmm. like shit. Because I'll be like, oh, fuck, I should have did something. So I feel like, obviously, starting something is the hardest part of it. Just, yeah. like, getting up and saying, like, I'm going to do this and then doing it, that's the hardest part of anything. So, like... The hardest part of going to the gym is actually physically going to the gym. Like, like the gym part isn't hard. Trust me, I know this. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know this. But if you just take it upon yourself to be like, just like, I know this sucks. I just have to start it and I'll be able to get through it. And then once I'm through it, I'll feel accomplished. Like with our taxes, then it's it, it feels good. It it does, but maybe, I, I don't know, did normal did not I shouldn't say normal. Normal's not the right word. Did non ADD people not struggle with like that starting thing? Like how much of a struggle is it for you? Like for me it's like I will literally sometimes, depending on what it is and depending on how like in the zone I am, this is kinda terrible, but like I will find something else that's been on my list to do. It it may still have some importance, but I definitely recognize that I do that. Oh, well, it's easy to get sidetracked and do something else that is more fun as well. <laughs> Fortnite? You want to play Fortnite after? Fortnite, yeah. <laughs> All right. Later, podcast. No! Fortnite. <laughs> Hi, Danny. I think everyone struggles with the get-go just at different levels. Some days I'm super motivated and crank through everything, and other days I'm like, nah, better not. See, yeah, so that's that the difference between motivation and discipline. Oh? Elaborate on your perspective. Like, here. you can be motivated to do something, and you'll fucking get it done. But it's the days that you don't feel motivated to do something, you need to have discipline to make up for it. True. But, like, I, I don't know. Um, as someone who in the past has suffered with, like, uh, mental illness and depression, I sometimes you have the motivation and the at one point you might have had the discipline. But when those things take over, it's like... You literally feel like you're made of jelly and you can't move. I, I don't mm. know how else to explain it. So if, if you've never experienced that, then that's fair. But as someone who has in the past, I, that it can be very, very, very hard to push through. You will do it anyways if you are disciplined. To a certain degree, I suppose. Okay, so speaking of Danny and Danny, Danny mm -hmm. and Danny, Dan and I Danny. I love them. I love them, folks. I love them too. We were talking about possibly going to see them, uh, maybe a convention or something at some point. But what's your favorite? Like, let's talk about travel. What has been your favorite memory travel traveling? One for business, for like mm -hmm. the YouTube channel, and one personal. Well, immediately, my favorite travel is always just like, I want to go to Mexico. <laughs> I knew that was going to be the yeah. personal one. I don't know. It's it's so, like, even the, our last Mexico trip was, like, very businessy. Yes, yeah, so it, it was, actually. Like, people saw us go to Mexico, but, like, literally every day, I'm getting ready, Kyle is following me around with a camera, and we're shooting in between eating and, I mean, 
we were like we in did, Mexico. enjoyed ourselves too, but well, fuck yeah, I enjoyed. It myself, was very but. businessy, but it was very like I needed it. Mm -hmm. Um, and then when you come back from Mexico, you're you like, oh fuck, I need to go back. But as time progresses, like we've been back for what three months, four months now, mm -hmm. it it seems like your your need to go is less. Well, because um, it's summer now too, yeah, right? But like it's, it's nice something. Outside. It's something that I really, really enjoy doing. Mm -hmm. um, but for business, I think like the racetrack is definitely my favorite, favorite thing to do. Which is weird because like, I don't know, everything leading up to the racetrack sucks. And then when mm, you're there, like it's great. And then everything after that sucks too. Interesting. Like, prepping for the racetrack, I'm like, oh, fuck, do I really even want to go? <laughs> like, I just, like... Uh, is that how we ended up canceling for a sick week? Or it's sick probably... Summer, I mean? Honestly, probably. It? It's just, like... Mm, knowing I, that the prep was coming? I, I've been really bad at, like, organizing myself, and um, obviously my garage is a mess all the time, <laughs> but I've been trying to take it upon myself to, like, set a new standard and a new level for myself where, like, the cleanliness is there, I... I have room to work. I don't feel like I'm crowded and I, I everything just falls into place. And, and I want to take like the garage cleanliness and making the cars look better and cleanly. And, and it just like, it, it increases the mood around the racing aspect of it. And it makes me want to like okay. do better. Like, uh, I don't know in, in my head, it makes sense, but it's just, I feel like if the cars look clean and the garage look clean and everything is nice, then I'm going to enjoy, like, going to the racetrack. Uh, I don't know how that works. <laughs> like, <laughs> Is there... I, I, Sorry, go ahead. The, I don't know what the stigma is attached to it. It's just that's how I feel. That's what I've been trying to do. Mm. I, I guess you're just trying to be, like, the most prepared you can be, though, right? Because it would suck to get to the track and have something you could have prepared previously happen at the track and then you don't get as many runs or whatever right like then it feels yeah. like a waste because for us we do have to travel six hours south just to get to the nearest racetrack so it it i could see where that i guess is that a form of preparation anxiety that kind of kicks in yeah that's unappealing too yeah <laughs> the travel yeah the truck well you like going there but it sucks that it's six hours basically yeah so obviously for business i enjoy like going to the racetrack and then for personal, I love going to Mexico. But is there like th the more that we go to these conventions as well, like the the anime conventions and the cosplay stuff, like I enjoy that thoroughly too. Mm -hmm. We have so much. So when we go to conventions, we're like, uh, it's I'm a little obsessive over um, Dragon Ball and Naruto, but meeting people, seeing all the cosplays, hanging out, like we eat good food and I, it's it's literally one of the funnest things i think even mm -hmm. though it may not it may not i guess cause any progress really any measurable progress with my status or the level of content that i make or you know what i mean it doesn't actually progress anything about my career besides the fact that i am meeting people i'm you know, having a great time. We have been like vlogging it, but it's not like it's a huge thing I gotta for edit us. Got that video too, actually. Yeah. Um, um, but also it... on the flip side, like it, the first time you get noticed at one of these things is like it. it oh, there's well, a feeling that you can't explain. I feel like I don't think did anybody. I don't think anybody noticed me for being alien trash kitty, and that's okay. Like I still consider myself like a smallish kind of streamer creator or whatever you want to call it um but people have recognized my cosplays and asked to take pictures with cosplays and even that feels so cool so i think one of the things i want to do when we go to more conventions is like whatever theme of cosplay i want to continue because we did this last time with naruto continue to take pictures with other people who have amazing cosplays Mm -hmm. Either in that theme or just maybe if I love their cosplays anyways. Because I feel like knowing that what that feeling gives me, I feel like they probably get the same feeling too. Even though like they're just there because they just like to dress in cosplay. And I just think that's kind of a fun, you know what I mean? Like pass on a nice thing to somebody else too. And so. the cool, cool thing about the conventions is there's like no judging going on either. It's like everyone's there for the same thing. And yeah. it's, it's, it's actually a, a nice change of pace. It, it literally feels so... Like, you you feel like you belong there. Do you know yeah, what I'm saying? It, it, it is really inviting. It's nice. Yeah. Yeah. 
sometimes being present is just part of the business plan. Absolutely, Danny. And, and I mean, uh, last time we were at the track, someone actually recognized you, though. Remember, she was like, I'm fangirling so much right now. Can I get a photo? And like, oh my she was God. taking photos of your car. And like, yes, that, okay. So that did happen like a couple times. Actually, oh my goodness. Uh, I was at the dentist office with our daughter, <laughs> and some lady was like, with her kid, and she's like, my daughter doesn't believe me that you're Alien Trash Kitty. And I was like, yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, she wanted to take selfies and everything, and I was kind of like, I don't mind it. I mean, if I was somewhere like, if somebody did that to me last night when we were at uh, our daughter's dance recital, I probably, like, while I was enjoying the moment, I, I might have been a little upset because, like, just let me have this moment with my kid. But yeah. otherwise, like, we're at the dentist's office. I don't care. If it's anywhere else, I really don't care. But if it's, like, a moment with my family, like, sometimes I guess space is needed. But it does feel kind of nice when people are, like, excited to see you. I think that's what it is. They're excited to see you. Do you have a favorite specific track day? Because you said the track is your favorite business travel, but, like, is there a specific track day that was, like, the best fucking track day of your life? Um, there is a specific moment that I feel really proud of. Mm -hmm. uh, Miles of Mayhem, day okay. four. Okay. When I made my pass at Rimby, the fastest pass uh, of the day. And the cylinder heads decided that the valves didn't want to seat anymore. <laughs> and we had to rip the heads off at the track. Mm -hmm. So for anybody who doesn't know, Miles of Mayhem is basically a drag and drive event. And what a drag and drive event is, is you take your race car. There's five different tracks over five different days. Well, four different tracks, five different days. You start and end at the same place. You race uh at the first track and then you drive to the next track and then the next day you race at that track and then you drive to the next track and these tracks are like four or five hundred kilometers in distance apart on day four uh it was like uh, i had a fuck it moment i was like fuck it if it breaks right here i'm just leaving the car here <laughs> yeah i was gonna say you literally like i was quoting you because you were like well fuck it i'll turn it up if i break it i'll leave it and i'll just hop in the car with gina yeah so i you ended up breaking it, it. Um, but it was a fixable break only because we had a bunch of people come together. So it and was a late... network basically and right? a network. It was basically yeah. late in the evening. We had the engine half apart. We took the cylinder heads off the engine, sent them an hour out of town to get some new valves put in the heads. And it was midnight, I think, by the time we got the car put back together. And how far did we have to travel to the next track? It was at least like what, three or four hours, maybe? Yeah, it was like 400 kilometers to the next track. We ended I up doing so, half yeah. the half the journey, I think, <laughs> that night. That's and brutal. then stayed at a random hotel and did the rest of the journey the next day. But managed to pull it off, like had the cylinder heads off, put them back on, drove the car the 400 kilometers. And I think that was the most, like, I'll remember that one for a long time. Mm. Are there, is there anything outside of the car? Let's Let's talk outside of the car world. Is there anything outside of the car world that inspires you or, um, like, prompts you to make changes or the way that you create your own content? I mean, I'm always following the YouTube algorithm on what it is. Um, but I don't want to try and make my car content anything other than car content, if that makes sense. Okay. But there's definitely, like the the way you uh build the content or uh distribute the content is definitely like there's definitely outside sources all the time taking whether it's mr beast's videos or like somebody else's videos that you see do really well and you see the concept behind it and how they put it together and you kind of have like a structured timeline of how you should put your shit together and you kind of think about that all the time so there's definitely outside sources affecting videos all the time but i don't really want to specifically move away from car stuff okay so like does does anybody outside of the car world inspire you sort of the same way that like cletus mcfarlane would this is just a question because i'm just wondering like when you're watching this other content or whatever um, are you just consuming or do you use it as like a oh you know what like this theory here i could somehow incorporate I've, or something i think i've used it more to try and grow businesses 
outside of YouTube. So like oh. one specific example would be Christian Guzman. So I've okay. watched him for a really long time. He was like a fitness influencer to start, but he was also into cars and stuff. So I've watched him grow over the years where he started with like his little gym and then he had his clothing line. And then um, he kept upgrading his cars, making bigger gyms and stuff. So like watching it from my perspective, I'm like, maybe I can do that sort of like have my channel have like this growing theme to it. Mm, okay. Which is what I would like to do. Um, I've never really taken it into action, but that's just one of the outside sources of like inspiration to me was always looking back on how he did it and what he's doing. So he's actually the owner of Alpha Lee, and then he's with uh, the girl who owns Buff Bunny. Right. Which I know oh, you know okay, who she okay. is. I so. know. I, I don't even know her name, but I know Buff Bunny because I, I like yeah. their clothing. So. Okay. So let's not talk about cars anymore okay <laughs> what is your favorite non-car related thing to do besides sleep on the couch after making the bed <laughs> making a mess wet? on the bed <laughs> yeah like, um not sleepable what's your so favorite besides thing like i i i do enjoy crossfit yeah um uh i haven't went in a while just because cars have like there's this consumment of cars when it comes to like getting things prepped and built and stuff but i love doing crossfit um that's probably like my main thing i like doing outside of cars maybe except for you maybe <laughs> okay okay that's the main thing though like yeah i think <clears throat> so. fortnite cough i know i love playing fortnite too but i feel like if i had to drop fortnite right now i could probably do that oh really yeah if it be okay. if it came between like if you had to choose <laughs> sorry there's a cat Oh my god, Archie, get down. He's just hanging from the wall trying to do a pull-up because he can't get up there now. Oh my god, what a dumbass. <laughs> okay, let me go get him for a second here. <laughs> yeah? You stupid ass. That's so funny. They're bad. They'll jump up in that window and then they'll like jump on his PC. He basically do you have to cover the button still, or was that only on the old PC? Uh when I have my SD card reader in there, it covers the button. Oh, okay, I see. Yeah, so uh, I could give up. Like, if I had to choose between Fortnite and CrossFit, I would probably pick CrossFit, to mm -hmm. be honest. Yeah. But we definitely are avid Fortnite players. Uh, yes. And honestly, it's a good way to wind down. It's one of those things where, like, it makes you angry sometimes, but you still enjoy doing it. <laughs> like, there's definitely anger in Fortnite. Yes, basically. It's what that the... meme where... Sorry, it's that meme where it's all like, it's fun. We do it because it's fun. And he's like mad. But he's angry. <laughs> yeah. But like, I don't know. It still feels fun though. Even though sometimes I feel like we're cussing because we're get we're literally getting destroyed when we drop. You know what I mean? But it's yeah. still fun because I feel like the next game, you. I mean, if it gets repetitive, of course, that's when we like legit like rage quit. But I don't know. Yeah. I like it. I like it a lot. Um, Frick, what was the next thing I was going to ask you? I had it, and I can't remember. How long have you been streaming now? It's like, it's oh, like almost four years now, right? Um, I think this November will be four years that I started streaming. Um, it's been just over two years since I became a full-time content creator. I yeah. guess that's, that's kind of, um, Man, a Twitch big is milestone a weird one. because that's when I sort of making everything more twitch is definitely like a hard one to to figure out as well why what do you mean just from like our experience like growing on twitch seems like the hardest oh. one we've ever taken on as a task yeah so for me personally like i used to really put emphasis on trying to get partner and maybe one day that'll still happen i shouldn't say maybe it'll happen when it's meant to happen like that's N not to say I can't work towards it, but I was stressing the idea in my head that if I didn't put in full-time streamer hours, I would never get it. Um, and I think that stressed me out and made me kind of enjoy it less because I was, I felt like at one point, it just, I don't know. It stressed me out. I don't know why it stressed yeah, me out. I don't even know how to put it. It's one of those things where... But now I'm just like doing it more looser, doing it for my enjoyment obviously for you guys too and i want to give you guys good content but like 
if I'm not enjoying it, you're probably not going to enjoy it either. So I want it to be quality time together, not necessarily quantity time together. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the follower thing is one of the things you just can't force either. No, yeah, Twitch is definitely um, kind of a different beast because they don't have discoverability. They don't have, like, content... What's the word? Like, presentation, I suppose. The way, like, YouTube and TikTok and all those other things. Like, it's just... Yeah, unless it's you're... It's not there for discoverability. Yeah, if you if, unless you're looking for it, you're not going to find it. Mm-hmm. And I mean, ev- I feel like everybody does the thing where it's like, you could have a viral video and be like, go follow all my socials or my Twitch. Not all the... Some of them will go, but... You know, it, 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 it rarely converts to Twitch. I it, feel like Twitch is a hard conversion for you, me. It you, is personally. You want to know my theory? The what? password and the um, the physically making a Twitch account and like having the stupid password and then like having the the you hard probably... way to log in oh, to the Twitch factor or something. Yeah, like really limits how easy it is to get like uh, a genuine watcher of Twitch. Like you have to be dedicated to watching Twitch in order to get that interaction because they make it so difficult to even to just have a have a a, like a a, just a casual account well i guess that kind of comes with the fact that like for my other platforms for example on facebook i have like three hundred and seventy five thousand followers now which is a lot that is a lot for me whereas comparatively i only have sixteen thousand on twitch but a lot of the people on facebook don't they just don't use twitch you know what i mean like either they're not Mm -hmm. into video games or it's just not their thing and that's okay but i don't know like i'm gonna keep doing twitch of course yeah but it's just i i'm not putting as much pressure and stress on myself to like force that milestone to come i feel like the more i grow and the more i make content that i enjoy making and other people enjoy that it'll just naturally grow and it might always be lower than my other socials i don't know but well this is this seems like like a great way to collaborate in a roundabout way as well and that's like that's basically what i i wanted it for too so yeah do you guys oh hold on a second Oh my god, Cora's calling me. Look at okay. Naruto back there. It's big head Naruto. Oh my big god. Ass head. Wait, it's on this side. My yeah. little piggy bank right here. He's so cute. What do you mean? Um, if you okay, this is totally a non related to anything question. If you could Ooh. have dinner with anybody, dead or alive, who would it be? And oh why? What would you eat? Oh. That's a really weird question. Why is that weird? Like, if you could like, meet somebody I, like I just, and have I just, dinner with them. I know, but now I have to think about, like, I only got one shot at this, so you don't want to fuck it up. But, come on. I might ask you again next time, and then you can pick someone else. Yeah, but I don't know if I want to waste <laughs> my one dinner on someone that I, like, fanboy over, or if I want to waste it on someone I would get, like, get some information, like, mm. in, insightful information out of. So you can't get insightful information out of somebody that you fanboy for? I like I could definitely, but okay. I'm just like in my mind. I'm thinking about the com- like the the quote that says, "Surround yourself with five millionaires, and you'll be the sixth. Yes, yeah. I, I'm wondering if I take take this opportunity to insightfully talk to somebody who has like an in in the world, and they can tell you like, "Guy, yeah, okay, go over here and and do this thing, and you know you'll be you'll set." Or if you want to talk to somebody who's like invented a bunch of shit from like back in the day or if i want to even go for a back further back than that and talk to like some warrior who was in like the i don't know war way back like two thousand years ago like why uh, would you I, want to talk to them like me personally that person is not on my list at all so or, tell me why or, that person's like, on your list I, I want to talk to somebody who like uh built the pyramids why not I you could like uncover history like yeah exactly. What if it was an alien who built the pyramid? Then it you're might talking be. to an alien. So. <laughs> well, I mean, there's probably like I, I I don't know. I've been down some rabbit holes of this lately, but like there's theories that it was like a, a very civilized civilization that built the pyramids, and you know, a cataclysmic event happened twelve thousand years ago and just wiped out this civilization, and it can easily happen to us with no trace of whatever happened left. 
So, okay, so your dilemma with picking someone is <laughs> there's too many it's to pick be from. <laughs> somebody informative or somebody you just would enjoy being around. Like, yeah. Like, I, I'd love to, s like, I'm not a very conversational person either, but I'd like to maybe, like, if I had to pick with someone right now, I think it would probably be like Elon Musk or something. I'd just, like, get in his head. What would you ask him that he already hasn't been asked before on a podcast? I don't know. <laughs> you love hookers? You think he's going to, like, okay, is this assuming you could, like, give them a truth serum or something? Yeah. No, uh, I don't well, know. we're not we're not doing that though. But like for me, um, I'm also gonna answer this question just because I feel like it. But, yes, uh, please do. Right, right now because in this mo yes, right <laughs> now it. in this moment, like it would make my heart so happy to meet Jack Black, and I feel like. I will figure every, anything else that I need to like progress in life will come to me, Wh whether it's through a book or a person or something I watch on the internet. I don't know. Like, I don't think some dead or alive person is going to tell me the exact secret that I need to know. So I would rather spend my time, I think, with somebody who like fills my heart. Do you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. that and Jack Black, uh, assuming that it would be what you see is what you get type thing i i think jack black would be so amazing to me and this is definitely like a different like because i know you you know me um yes, yes. it's like a, it's definitely a little bit different of a podcast but like because um i don't know where we are in the stage of like how successful we've been in the last recent times and we're like okay what do we do now like i i just i want some guidance on where do i go next but i i still feel like that's an answer that doesn't come from somebody else. That's what I, that's, that's all I'm feeling. It will come to you, but n may not be through necessarily One somebody giving or you strict yeah. instructions. I yeah. feel like it's something where like, when I say it comes from someone or a book or whatever, some piece of information is going to click and you're going to know. That's what I mean. Not like, okay, that's not how Williams, we learn, though, remember? go up here and tell me your password to get into your banking account. Like, that's not the instructions no, I mean. But I mean, like, something I don't will, tr you'll know. That's, I don't know. That's all I got. How do you know I'll know? Because I trust the process. <laughs> that's why, I know honestly. You do. Everything I know. is a trust the process for me personally. Because it is, yeah. I feel With your like body painting and painting in general. Like, do you? I've watched feel... you paint a whole ass photo <laughs> that looks like I I can't even explain it. It doesn't look like anything. And then you like come in with a black marker, and then I'm like, oh, it was that last three seconds of work you did there that tied it all together. It's definitely one of those things where the beginning stages of a project. I'm sure you feel the same way. Like, think about even my fox. I think about when we gutted it. It literally didn't have wheels and was on stands with no engine or transmission for forever. So literally it was useless. True. You know what I mean? Like, and I am not, I'm a car person. I like cars. I can build an engine, but I am not familiar or experienced with all the little things that go together on a car to make it work as a whole. So I imagine your project car as a whole is the same as my body paint as a whole like in my mind i know all the little things i need to do to get there and i feel like you're the same way with a car project basically or you have an True. idea and you kind of just feel your way as you go as well do you know what i mean well it's funny because like because i have that aphantasia thing where i can't actually see anything <laughs> when i close my eyes yeah, yeah. I, I don't know how many other people have this but like when i close my eyes it's just black i can't picture anything so like as a kid when they're like okay Okay, class, put your head down on your desk, close your eyes, and picture like a beautiful sunny day, and you're out on a hill playing or whatever. I'm like, what he the fuck are you guys anything. seeing? I, I can't see this. Like, I just thought it was normal. I thought like nobody could see anything, and you were just kind of like imagining it. Like, and I don't but even know what I mean by that. But like, though. yeah, that's like, what I mean. <laughs> so, literally, look around you right now. Yes. Okay? Like, where you are sitting, look at it with your eyeballs. I could close my eyes and do the same exact motion and see myself that way in my head. I could literally see it with my eyes closed. Will I see it exact? Probably not because, you know, I'm not going to remember every single fucking detail. But it, I, I have a general idea. And 
for example, I was looking for, um, on my way down, I've had really dry lips from my medication. On my way down to my desk, I was like, shit, I didn't put on any lip chat because my lips have been killing me. My lips hurt real bad. Um, and I was like, oh, I, I literally could picture my desk and I was like, I know I have this lip chap here. I could literally see where it was in the general area. But you and put your phone down and lose it all the time. It, make it make sense? I don't know. Yes, I will put my phone down and I'll think I put it in a spot where I'm like, okay, I, I, I will not forget where this is. And then I go into a different room and I'm like, Kyle, have you seen my phone? It's <laughs> like non-existent. Does that yeah. also apply to feelings? Like when you can remember what it feels like to feel the sun. Ooh. Um, no, it, do it doesn't to that. Like I like can remember. Like you can do that? Like your, your, uh, like there's a smell memory. I still have that. Like okay. I can associate a smell with a memory. Mm -hmm. So, um, but you, so basically think about it. I think like an email, it's like the fancy emails that show like pictures and videos. And then there's the HTML email where it's like just text from like the shitty, like, you know what I'm talking about? It's just text. That's so what I, Kyle knows is just Yeah. Text. When I close my eye, like I'm looking at my webcam right now and it has like a little, <laughs> like light around it so if i close my eyes sometimes i can see like the little light because it was bright in my eyeball mm. on top of like a black background that's about it that's that's like the extent of my um images yeah however i've had like vivid dreams before where like where, like you feel like you're in it yeah where i feel like i'm in it and i i've like i see the everything in my dream yeah but like to have this imagination i just don't have it which i like i'm just not a good creator like i feel like and you you say that i i can create because i create these car things but like i don't see it in my head and i never considered myself a creative person until you said that like well it's more than just like a drawing or whatever to make you a creative person you can do like this car thing and that's being creative in your own way too which I never thought about, but like it, it absolutely is when you're like, oh, I picture I'm going to put the two turbos here and it's going to look good because of this. And then I'm going to string this pipe this way and I'm going to put it out the fender or whatever the fuck you do with it. You know what I'm saying? Like that in itself is a different form of creativity. Absolutely. Because I feel like there are probably people that are okay with just doing it a basic way that everybody else has done. And because you're striving to have that not just unique because obviously there's limitations to how unique i guess it could be when you put a turbo in a car but you do go above and beyond the basics you know what i mean so there's definitely creativity in that creativity in that yeah like i just never thought of myself as like an artistic person like to say but then mm. the, i guess there's art in everything if you really think about it art what's what's the saying art is literally subjective and i feel like there's kind of an art to everything if you yeah. think about it but. when when you really think about it when you sure. really get into it you smoke a lot of weed art and everything <laughs> art inspiration art you ever seen the back of a 20 dollar bill Ever. on weed okay going back to danny's questions about feelings though like oh? could you think about an orgasm and like remember how it felt Yes, because I physically was there. So there's like a, f like I can, I can reiterate the physical part of it, oh, but okay. to imagine it, like what I was, like how I was fucking, I can't, I can't do that. <laughs> you can't imagine like, no. okay, so if you do something that worked out really well, for example, you don't remember it for next time? Uh, yeah, because I can remember the physical part of it. I can, oh. like, I can remember that one plus one equal two. No, okay so like but you just can't see it in your head yeah that so if i so... like if i went upstairs That's and i tried funny. jerking off but like close my eyes and picture <laughs> like your ham sandwich there i just couldn't do it no you'd probably have to draw like a couple of pictures a couple of lines well you know what's crazy then... i've seen your face every day for like four years if i was told to like like you stayed in the other room if i was told to like close my eyes imagine it and then put it down on a piece of paper i couldn't I couldn't really? get any dimensions right. I couldn't. <laughs> you're not gonna, like you're not going to get dimensions right. Like we're not talking down to a science, but you have like you don't even have a general. Overview. I couldn't like I couldn't tell you how your eyebrows are shaped. 
I just don't have that physical like like the the imagery in my head. Okay, but you could think about me and think about what? Like, you know I have blue eyes and blue hair. Yeah, so it would just be blue hair and blue eyes on a stick woman. <laughs> <laughs> I see. I see. Hmm. If you could switch lives with anybody, who would it be? And why? Uh, it would but do I get their memories or my memories? If uh, say you could do it for a day just to enjoy their life assuming it's you all right then i'm switching with you so i can feel how good that dick is that's actually a really good question because like last night i made demonic <laughs> noises like our bed was drenched i don't even know what noises came out of my body but like anyways i i okay i don't but... know it, it would definitely be a female just to <laughs> understand the other side of it it like which female i don't know I think that, like, if I had a day to switch bodies with anybody, it would have to be a female, <laughs> okay, so I could at least figure bodies, out. Bodies, though, it could be like their life. Like, do you want to know what it's like being like Jack Black for a day? No, he's got a dick. I want to know what it feels like. Ah, uh, oh, get up so and, like, yeah. genuinely, your curiosity comes from like the. I I honestly think okay. This is gonna sound really fucking weird. I do not care because. I don't care. I'm very open about my sexuality and the fact that, like, for me, pleasure is a turn on. That's 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 how I'm going to preface this. So basically, I imagine that it feels the same. You just have a different genital. It like the goodness in the body still nope, is going to feel the same. Nope. You don't think so? Nope. Our orgasms are like five seconds, and I know you've had orgasms for like a minute, so. You definitely don't want to be a man for a day because you're downgrading, but... <laughs> not, like, uh... Okay. But on the flip side of that, not every dude can make... Like, some girls don't finish. Ab absolutely. Absolutely. So, so, like, sometimes you get the short end of the straw, too. But, okay, also, some of those people who don't finish with their man, some of those, unfortunately, don't even know how to finish themselves. So, like, that's that's a whole other conversation about where people oh, yeah. feel comfortable in their sexuality. I think for us, to be honest, okay, this is like totally sort of sidetracked from the base of what I want my podcast to be. I definitely <laughs> don't want it to be a sex talk. But when we started creating um, adult content, that is when things, I feel like anyways, I was thinking about this yesterday. I'm like, literally ever since we started making adult content, it's like we literally fuck all the time. Like, like we're making adult content but it just genuinely is good and we are comfortable with each other and comfortable with exploring what feels good so i feel it's good it comes down to being comfortable with the person and your own body really anyways that's that's a side that's track. a tangent yeah we, yeah, we definitely got off track there tangent. but i just was having fun talking about it like i said if i could be anybody for a day it'd have to be a female of some sort okay i mean yeah. i got big titties and a ham sandwich so Imagine we could switch bodies for a day. What if I couldn't make you come in my body the same <laughs> way that you can make me come, though? Then what? I'd be like, how do I do it, Kyle? Teach I'd be like, me. pass me that corn. Put it in my ass. <laughs> God. <laughs> <laughs> if you could eat one food for the rest of your life, what would it be? This is Pizza? probably my last question, and then I, I feel like we should probably wrap things up and because we had some good conversations. Sorry. Pizza. It would just be pizza? Yeah. What, what do you mean, just pizza? You you said one food. I uh, Does pizza count as one food? Because technically, you could put anything on pizza. Do you know what I mean? You could have a breakfast pizza. You could have, like, a dinner pizza. You could have a dessert okay. pizza. Do I have to name a specific... I'll have pepperoni pizza for the rest of my life. Sure. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, damn. I, I think I would get sick of it. Like, for the first week, maybe I'd be okay. And then I feel like after that, I would... What, what are you going to have for every day and not get sick of it? <sighs> that's a great question. I don't know. And then you have to think about living as well. Because you need Ballard's protein. That's why it's such a good answer. I, I agree, though. It, it's true, I guess. It's very versatile. Like, it's got protein in it. It's got carbs in it. It's got fat in it. There's probably some sort of like vitamins and stuff in it 
<laughs> I guess you could probably make it healthier to like it doesn't have to be like Little Caesars pizza all the time. It could actually be some yeah. sort of. A but if I had to pick one food, it's pizza, obviously. <laughs> okay, fine. What are you picking? I don't know. I I actually don't have an answer because what kind of bullshit is this. You're like <laughs> on the spot. You got to answer this question, but I ain't got to answer to it. Yeah, basically. <laughs> Mm, biggest okay this will be the last one because um it doesn't have to be like all questions like the back and forth banter is fun too i guess i just don't want i feel like i don't want the guests to ever feel pressured no no you have always got to re-engage me that's my job i feel you know what i mean it's always Um, your job to engage and then yes absolutely um but let the let the tangents happen you know I mean, if, if we go off fun. somewhere else, tangents yeah. are definitely fun sometimes. Tangents are okay, but we'll also have to bring it back. But what are your biggest goals, I guess, for like the next two to five years for content creation? Like, where do you specifically see content creation? Yeah, like I, where I, do you I see definitely want to get to a point where I know what I want to do next. Right now, I don't know what I want to do next all the time. Which is that a bad thing though? It's probably not a bad thing, but like, uh, next two to five years, I definitely want to get up to like a like I know subscriber number doesn't mean a lot nowadays, but like a million subscribers definitely is the like a milestone. Yeah, milestone, half end goal kind of deal. Like I don't think it'll ever end there, but mm. that's kind of like where I want to get to. Um, and it's just thinking of unique and fun ways to to get there, and I feel like. 2023 which is the year we're in right now because you know i fuck that up all the time <laughs> i know I still say this, it's 2022 sometimes. yeah i feel like this was our growing and prep year and i mm. i definitely took a step back from youtube because i definitely don't want to burn myself out i spent a lot of time getting to where i am now and i feel like once i quit my full-time job i was like i'm going to attack this so hard and i feel like i attacked it for a little bit and i was like if i sustain this i am going to burn out mm-hmm so I, I, I witnessed that from an outside the box perspective, but keep going. Yeah, this. so I I actually took a step back, which I know a lot of people have seen, and I I do it casually, but enough that like it's I'm still making stuff. Uh, so I'm just like coasting. Um, but I feel like 2023 is the the setup year, and then next mm-hmm. year is going to be the the bigger year. Okay. I yeah. also, like, for me personally, I don't feel like sometimes these, like, down or um, where, like you said, you're like, I don't really know what I'm going to create. You feel like you're kind of in a limbo or an in-between. Sometimes, like, I try not to stress about it because I'm like, I always think of something. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like, when I was in, for me, when I was inspired by, uh, when we first started watching Dragon Ball, when I first became obsessed with Dragon Ball, like, that inspired me to do those paints. Because I was like, you know what? I I would really love to recreate these characters on myself. And that inspired me to start that. And now that I kind of have that under my belt, like, I was inspired to do the Naruto ones. And usually in the in-between, I, I usually have fun trying other things or dabbling in something and i i don't i've talked about it on stream a lot we never talked about it in this podcast but a lot of my creative history comes from literally trying things and failing because i was never actually technically trained in anything whether it's well besides mechanics i suppose um like my art my cosplay my body paints um photography i took photography workshops a long time ago they changed how i created but It still wasn't technical training by any means. A lot of things that I did in my past and I created in my past kind of actually helped me nowadays um, because, for example, the modeling or the cosplay or trying to make good presentable content came from trying to do that previously as a photographer or a boudoir photographer or you know what I mean like I've just kind of always had this sense and I feel like I'm always building on it and when I try these little things in between like I really um Danny knows I really want to work on um controlling my voice better I would love to do voice acting I feel like even if it's just dabbling in between the things that really push me as a creator i feel like they're still adding value to what i have under my belt type thing um because i as long as it's something within my creative circle or even a little bit on the outside i'm i'm growing 
as, as yeah, a creator. Course. You know what I mean? So. And even if I'm not filming stuff, I'm always like constantly pushing myself to like learn new things and grow all the time. It's just, mm -hmm. yeah, the, the content is, it'll come, it'll come. Ballard says, uh, I also feel like if you had a bigger space, it would be a lot easier. Would give you a lot more motivation if you had the space to work on multiple projects and be able to jump from one to the other to change things up and keep it fresh from day to day. Instead of just having to pick one or two projects and being stuck with them. True. This is also true. Yeah, and then, and then the flip side of that is I actually, like, waste a day when I w decide to work on something else. Like, if it's not in the garage, I have oh, to somehow have to, like, get it in the it? garage. So mm. I've got to shift it from one garage to the other. That'll come with time, and that is definitely, like, the direction we're heading in, is that we're going to have more space. Eventually, yeah. For sure. Yeah, and it, I'm not stressed about it. I'm 32 years old. <laughs> like, I've got... I, I, I Aren't keep you thinking like, No, not yet. Oh? It's my Sorry, birthday. keep going. Yeah. So what? I'm 32 years old, and I keep thinking, like, fuck, I haven't accomplished all of these things yet. But then, like, they're... The more you look into it, like people start their career at 35 sometimes. So, like, yeah. the, uh, I'm in no rush. And if I want to do this for the long term, I can't burn myself out on the way there. So, I definitely that... feel like enjoying it along the way is part of the goal. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. if you reach your goal, but you were miserable getting there, like, it, are you even going to reach? I don't know. Like, I, I would rather enjoy yeah. my life along the way. And then um, one of the hard things I've discovered also is like I, I always try and turn whatever I'm doing into content and I need to mm. like I need to stop doing that. So like when we stream late at night and play Fortnite, I'm like I like why am I not making this content? But then I have to realize that this is like my my cooldown phase where mm. I I need to, to get away from making content and that's what I enjoy doing. So I did stream for a while and then like it the upkeep of it and just like okay i gotta do this and then i gotta stream later it's just i uh, it was too many things so okay let's talk about balance then because i find for me literally i can find a moment to take a photo or like i just always feel like i'm in that on like i'm always trying to think of even if i'm not actively creating I'm trying to like mentally bank ideas or write them down somewhere. And even if they sit in a list, I just always feel like my brain is like spinning for that. And I don't like, do you turn that off? How do you turn that off? Uh, like late at night when we play Fortnite. That's about it. Like, yeah, but I'm streaming. Throughout the that's, day, that's content for me though. I know it is for you. So in my <laughs> line of work, like I'll wake up in the morning and because I have so many things, I make posts on like all the different social medias. That's like my morning routine. And then anytime throughout the day, I'm like, I'm always checking what I posted before, or I'm like trying to find something new to post, or I'm doing, trying to work on something to make something to post. Like, it's always a, like, we got rid of the nine to five, but it seems like, okay, now we're working every hour of the day because it's always constantly like, okay, what can I do to grow? Because if you're not doing anything, then you don't grow at all. Mm -hmm. I, I, like... I, that's that's where I struggle definitely is finding that line of like okay I genuinely need to give myself space because even sometimes I'll be like okay hey, I'm gonna have a bath and I'm gonna read a book or I'm gonna listen to like a meditation or something I sometimes end up like oh I'm just gonna look up this one thing that I forgot to look up earlier <laughs> and the next thing I know I'm rabbit holing information and it's like I'm always processing something do you know what I mean like I'm always consuming something yeah. to process and try and utilize it some other way like if that makes any sense i feel yeah, like a lot like of the work was... doesn't the work doesn't stop at five o'clock for us it's like no absolutely not we might chill out for an hour and watch like a tv show for an hour at five o'clock till six but then mm -hmm. also like my phone's like right there and i'm like okay well i'm just gonna post this while i'm here or i'm gonna tweet that while i'm here or yeah like there's there's always a constant like it's a different world for sure definitely and I, i'm i'm so thankful for the internet and that we have the opportunity to do this because yes. not everybody gets to do it but everyone good... could do it is the thing well to an everyone extent. could do it but it's not for everyone in the sense Correct. of like the way we enjoy it i feel like the there are people who just love having a nine to five or they've got a job that they love or you know what I mean? Like they just genuinely love what they're Dana doing and the thought of having um, a, a, like 
being self-employed stresses them out and they don't they might not True. even enjoy it's it. It's hard to get past the 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 comfort part of it. So like uh the the job security thing like leaping off out of that is the hardest part. Mhm. Mm yeah. I agree. I definitely think though like it's human nature to be like curious and want to create something and I feel like that's why um I think talking to content creators, not just artists, do you know what I mean? Like, cause I consider myself an artist, but I really want to reach out to different content creators because creating comes in so many different forms. Do you know what I mean? It sure so. does. Mm -hmm. And I love it. Me too. Well, is there, okay. Um, do, is there anybody in chat that wants to ask Kyle or myself, I guess at this point, a question? Um, I think, hi, best beer man. How are you? How are things? Good. This is our very first Probing with Gina podcast. Kyle is our first guest. If you're familiar with Kyle, you may or so may where, not have So where do you see yourself in two years then? Ooh, two to three question. years. Sure. So like, two? let's just say the end of like 2025. Um, I feel like... I am weird and I, I'm time blind. So I don't, I have this thing where I don't put dates on things and I, maybe I should, not. but at the same time, but like, do you want to stay out. in the Twitch space or are you trying to go to a different space or, um, this right now I feel like is a dabble that I want to do to meet people. So it's something I feel like the conversation could be helpful or inspirational to other people and also to me because I'm going to get like, I know you obviously, uh, yeah. you are my husband. Um, but when I meet new people, I'm, I'm actually planning on reaching out to people who are either like linear to me, smaller than me, bigger than me in like, they might be only in the Fortnite space. They might be in body paintings. Like they could be all over the map. Um, mm -hmm. What will that become? I don't know. I honestly think my goal like, is to be creating the best content that I could be making, whether it's like, I want to have presence online. I, d I don't know how to define that though. Like, I don't want to say I want to be huge on Twitch. Like, what if I end up being huge on YouTube? I will also accept that. So I want to be big in the internet space, making content that I love, meeting cool people, having fun, creating art. Like, I want to be known for being a creative person. Obviously, I'm trying to grow an audience. I, I don't have numbers, though. Is that weird to not have numbers to describe that? No, that's that? okay. Um, but that's that's definitely what I want. Like, I want to just continually stay curious and try different things to grow. Because, like I said, I feel that's, that still doesn't sound like a goal, but do I see myself podcasting in five years? Maybe. Maybe. It's that one is a of the great easier... answer. Thank you, Danny. I just like I I feel like I don't want to restrict myself either. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I love Twitch. Um I I really do love love live streaming on Twitch, but if it like what if it grows into a hosting thing? I do want to try voice acting. I I am open to that becoming a thing. I just genuinely want to do things that I love, enjoy my life, have time for my family live somewhere where I am genuinely happy with the space. You know what I mean? Like right now our house is good for what we have right now, but obviously eventually it would be so amazing to have like more studio room and more, um, I guess flexibility with like right now, I don't really have a plain wall anymore besides that one wall in our bedroom. <laughs> I was telling yes. Danny about it today. I don't really have a plain wall anymore just to take plain photos besides the one in our bedroom. And our bedroom well, is 99% of the time a huge mess. Like, my yeah. sex machine's on the floor, like, 90% <laughs> Well, it's a, it's a good thing that, like, outside of the garage, I, I, I live, like, a minimalistic lifestyle. So I don't have a lot of things inside. I have, mm -hmm. like, my PC, my one side of the bed, and that's about it. But 
I mean, and your piles of parts around Piles the house of car parts, but that, that should be things. in the garage. Yeah, you definitely yeah. don't take up a whole lot of space. I definitely... Uh, but but the your garage would, though. Come yeah. on now. The podcasting thing is definitely one of the easier things to maintain because it's just genuine conversations between two people, and I don't feel like it's forced. I don't feel like mm-hmm. it's it's like a hard thing. You don't have to stress about it because there's no like giant pre-planning. There's a couple questions you got to come up with, but... For the most part, if you can get the ball rolling and get the person to open up, I feel like let the conversation take the path that it's going to take. And mm-hmm. it's just like a, a fun thing to do. Like, I, and obviously, that's all I want it to be. Like, I feel yeah. like the more I it goes back to the conversation I said about stressing for partner on Twitch is yeah. like if I stress for that one specific thing, like. <sighs> I, I don't want to be stressed. I want to make content and grow but and, do and, it genuinely, right? Yeah, it's almost like if you try and force something as well, it doesn't it always does the opposite thing that you want it to yes. do. Yes. Yeah. And when you're just genuinely having a good time, making things that you like, that's when something hits like nine times out of ten, that's when something hits, right? Like when you're yeah. making content that really resonates with you and other people. So. Alright, so who who do you want to have on next? Like let's just say I'm number one. Mm-hmm. You have people in mind for number two, three, four, five. I actually already asked somebody for next week. Um, I was not expecting that she would be ready to like, because I was like, "Hey, I'm starting this thing. Here's the basis of it. I would love to have you on it." Um, it's somebody who actually I first when I first got on Twitch, she's one of the people that I first started watching. Uh, she does body paints. Actually, Slade was the one that introduced me to her. I watched um, Dejari. This is who I'm talking about. And also Dakota's. I would love to ask Dakota's that I think will come. I, I, I will likely ask him mainly because he is the first person that I ever watched on Twitch. And mm-hmm. he inspired me to start playing Fortnite. Dejari inspired me to start considering body paint, right? Like, I seen a couple other body painters, but she was the one that I really loved her artwork, the way that she, um, like her style of art and what her presence, I guess. So she inspired me to do body paint. She's actually going to be meeting me with, with me next week. This was kind of the test run. That's why Kyle is number one. She's going to be number two. So we might still, <laughs> I, everything seems to be okay right now. I'm curious to know how the recordings and stuff are going to show up on the podcast platform that I'm using. But yep. Dejari will be here next week. And we're going to talk about very similar things, creativity. Um, I think I don't even know if she's done body paints in a while, but I would love love to dig into why she started it in the first place and you know what I mean like what her favorite body paints are or her favorite you know projects things like that so it's just really cool I think to kind of open up another creator's brain and eat it like spaghetti so that's that's what we're I, gonna I do. know this is like off topic a little bit but like you should try and get a just thinking outside the box is like a creative person um like try and get a thumbnail made like prior to it like an advertisement thumbnail of you and her together like can you oh, picture okay. like a YouTube thumbnail where it's on yeah. like Tim the Tap Man and like Dr. Yeah. Disrespect playing together? Like, I feel like it. that's easy because I could just be like, send me, um, um, you could take like a screen grab <laughs> from like your webcam or your OBS or something. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, just pose for it and then mm-hmm. send that to me because that's going to be the same frame that shows up the same way you are. You would have to show me one like you are right now, though. Or yeah, but I'm thinking thing? like just make like a like a legitimate thumbnail. Even if you go to Fiverr oh, or something, be like, like not hey, even make with me. Like... Oh, okay. Fine. Yeah, yeah. Just for advertising, because like obviously Twitch is big on take me from your other platform and put me on Twitch. Yes. <laughs> so like, if you have something to post on Facebook, to lead them over and stuff. Just thinking like out loud. Um, That's a good idea too. If yeah. I can recommend somebody. Oh. That only because. This specific person was on your channel since the beginning, and then since then they've started streaming. Is this going to be uh, B Horse? Because I told B Horse <laughs> I wanted him on it already. Yeah. But B, I would like B Horse is another one uh, because that's I I love the story. I guess one of the reasons why I want to do this podcast, like I said, we're looking inside creators' brains and talking to them about what inspires them but also their journey like everybody's journey is also so different Mm -hmm. and that's kind of a cool thing you know what i mean like 
going back to goals and talking about journey, um, the other day you had asked me, like, what do I want? And this might sound very tropey or very, um, maybe stereotypical, but like, I would love to have a large platform. I mean, anybody who is trying to grow on social media wants yeah. a platform, right? Like, that's whatever. Regardless so, of how humble you are, you exactly. still want. Exactly. Yeah. You know what I mean? We're all humble, but it would be amazing to have a bigger audience. I would love to be as big or bigger, like, dare I say it? Dare I say it, Kyle? But, like, to be as big as someone like Amaranth, but doing what I do best. Not what Amaranth does, but what yeah. I do best. So I'm not trying to replace anybody. I'm not trying to take anybody's spot. I'm making a spot for myself at the big table. Like, that's, I want to be a big quality that's content fair. creator. And I'm making and my own seat at this table. Imagine to, like, re-loop that back around because initially uh, when you started your Twitch and your Facebook and all this stuff... I was a lot, like, I was much bigger than you, and if you ask someone where they came from, a lot of the time it was from my platform to yours. Yes. But now, if you ask them the same question of, like, how did you find me, a lot of the times it's just, like, I found you, you're on my homepage, or I like what you were doing, or I came from Facebook. Like, you've built your own thing, and I, I'm, like, I'm so proud of you for doing that. Because, ah, like, you. sure, it's easy to... Uh, build something off of something that's already built, which is like how collaboration works most times. Mm -hmm. But to to get there and build your own thing is still like amazing. Thank you. Uh, it's definitely, if you think about it, like when I think about my own journey as a creator, because I dabbled in so many things, I struggled with having a niche. I still don't have a niche. I've just accepted that now yeah. that I'm a you're, variety you're creator. You're yeah, weirdo. like I just I create variety content and I enjoy that and I mean some people might not like my body paints or my cosplays and they only want to see my car but like I'm not really a car content creator. I'm just the chick who's driving the car, really. Do you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, like... we made a list of everything that you do. <clears throat> you, like, race cars, you do body paints, <clears throat> you do art, you stream Fortnite, you're now doing a podcast. Like, there's no one specific thing that you've been doing. You do it all. But, I don't, like, maybe, maybe your viewership's higher when you do a hot tub stream. Maybe your viewership's lower when you do a podcast. Like, it, it's gonna be, it's gonna level out eventually to where people just come for you. Uh, and that's, that's, weird, but... that's what you hope for, right? Is that <laughs> yeah. audience where people want to come hang out with you, hear what you have to say, hear, like, have these engaging conversations, uh, not just with me, but whoever I decide we should talk to. Do you know yeah, I mean? and, and it's like, I keep talking about my YouTube about how this thing did really well and this thing is like, it's maintaining, but like, there's always a, like, when I post a video, I know it's going to do this amount of views because there's always going to be that base viewership who likes watching me for me and they don't care what I, I make. They just want to, like, interact with me. And then there's, like, this big viewership of, like, they're interested in what I'm doing and not so much me. Mm. I see what you mean, yeah. Um, just going back to the, ju the, the journey conversation, I was just thinking about how I ended up in body paint and... Because it's almost like every aspect of my variety in my content creation has had a progression that started from something small or like something whatever and evolved into what it is now. So like body painting, um, I think back in 2000, I don't know if it was 2015 or 17, I don't, not sure what year it was, but I was one of these fucking network what is it network marketing moms that was me i was fucking slinging makeup and <laughs> i was trying to sell makeup on the side i had a full-time job but i just i needed something on the side i always needed something like before that i had photography and because i i deep down knew that like the nine to five job just wasn't it was not satisfying for me what i was doing was not satisfying anyways and so I always had something to, like, fuel my creative cr curiosity. So I had photography. Eventually, I started selling makeup. And the makeup 
I was trying to sell was actually really good quality. It was like cream based. It was expensive. But to start selling it, I started doing live videos on my personal Facebook and I would do different makeup looks. And it would just be a face paint though at this point. And I literally would use that makeup and whatever fucking costume shit I had around me. Like it, it's not that I purposely made cosplay things at this point, but I knew how to be resourceful and like utilize things to make it look like I wanted. Um, and then it wasn't until after I had met you when I was like, oh, I started doing makeup, remember? I tried doing, like, actual makeup looks because makeup mm -hmm. on YouTube was kind of a bigger thing at the time, and I was, like, trying to fit into, like, just a makeup niche, and it, it, it literally, no I, I went through, like, this weird discovery of where I am now, but, yeah, <laughs> it was definitely an evolution. And for the most part, I've been, like, 100% behind, like, whatever you want to try, like, you were like, I want to try streaming. And we're like, okay, let's get a streaming PC. I want to try this. Let's do that. And then... A million percent, you have always been uh, my biggest Let's put supporter. a fucking hot tub in the basement. <laughs> <laughs> yes, definitely. Um, you said most, though, for the most part. What is something that you never approved of? Uh, it's not that I don't approve of it. It was like, what... I've, I question sometimes, like, what you're trying to do and what your intention is behind it, just so I can, like, figure out, like, where your head's and, at. And that's fair, because, like, maybe something inside me tells me I need to do it because it's going to open up maybe in this direction for me. You are not experiencing that same, like, aha moment, so I could understand why yeah. you want to question it, right? Like, I'm not trying to talk you out of it. I just want to know, like, where are you, <clears throat> you like where your vision at was for like specifically this podcast yes, you were like trying to I explain it to me about, and i'm yeah. like okay so you want to add another thing to what you're doing first i was like yeah so i think i'm gonna start a podcast <laughs> and he was like what you're already doing all these things like what and i was like yeah but you always tell me i need to collaborate and i do like i do find collaborating collaborating with other fortnite streamers for some reason i've never had luck with lining it up now could I try harder? Probably. But I'm also not the type of person to, like, beg anybody either. No. I, so, I, I'd still like to see you do that, actually. I, like, I, okay, yeah. let me let me finish, though. The fact that I was like, this is a great way for me to meet someone, have ca casual, like, kind of conversation. There's no pressure to be good or bad at a video game. Like, there's no, there's none of that distraction. We can just yeah. converse and meet. And so now say you're a different person that I never met before. We kind of have some sort of a connection. We've discussed these things. Now I could be like, hey, you know, like if you like Fortnite or you want to try it, like let's game together sometime and we could potentially collaborate outside of just the conversation. So true. And then like thinking because we're so dedicated to just Fortnite, that kind of limits like your collaboration space and i know people tell me i should try other games and do that but i just i don't enjoy other games that's that, the problem that's what, I'm, that's what i'm getting at here is that the yeah. podcast you can now you open up your scope of who you can collaborate with because just say panda skills for example because he was actually like super nice dude and like oh i love panda and, like, yeah and basically when we met panda at loot fest it was basically a little mini like exchange like this where though what? Oh my god, we were so high when we met at Loot Fest. But I do, like, he was telling me about, like, how he considered himself a content creator versus a gamer. So Panda would actually be a really excellent person to have here yeah. because um, me, I always try and lace my content with some sort of artsiness from my background, right? Like, I, I feel like I always try and do that. Whereas for him, he might have a different train of thought when he's creating his own content. So I, I feel like that's going to be a really interesting can of worms to open, even yeah. in talking to other creators and maybe inspire people in the audience, inspire other creators and myself. So I feel like yeah, it I, could be really fun. I feel like if you if you love the podcast, then it's a, definitely a great way to expand like your reach out to people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So there's Dejari's next week. I would like to get B Horse on here, and mm -hmm. I know B Horse had mentioned that he could probably. Um, I I'm assuming his, his schedule would be okay. Um, I am open to suggestions if there are people that you guys would like. Um, obviously it's not going to be everybody, and not everybody's going to agree to like be on this because it's like right now this is literally on my 
Twitch channel, not even on like a separate channel. I will be uploading it to Spotify. Um, that is kind of like also nervous. I don't know what oh, I'm doing. Oh, as like the audio version or an audio video I think version. you could upload video audio podcast to Spotify. So if they want to watch the video, they can. Or, or if audio. you just want to listen to the audio, you can. So oh, I will be uploading it to Spotify and probably my YouTube channel as well. I haven't yeah, decided YouTube if makes I'm going to. Gonna... Yeah. Yeah. So... We just got to get the thumbnail to go with the YouTube video because the YouTube is stupid like that. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that also comes with figuring out the program that I'm using uh, for this. I don't know how long it's going to take to process the video because we did a test run before this and a two minute video like still wasn't processed at the time. So I don't know what's going to happen here, but hopefully. Yeah, there's definitely going to be a couple hiccups, I think, with the whole podcasting producing Thing. Yeah, and that that that's just one of those things that you expect to evolve. Like, at least I've yeah. started it, and I don't know if we're going to do it, like, every Thursday, or if... Because I also don't want to have hard constraints on the creators that I am interviewing, because as content creators, that's one of the joys of your job, is having flexibility, so what works for me might not work for them, and I, is that good or bad? I don't know. True. And I feel like this one went decent, and as it progressed, we got, like, less stiff and more open, and I think that's just how it's gonna go. Like, we, we don't have a lot of experience in podcasting, and that the longer you do it, the more experience you get, and the more fluid it gets, it's probably gonna get better over time. So the first few are probably gonna be a little bit clunky. Maybe. Yeah. And then... <laughs> and that's okay, it is what it yeah. is, right? So... Uh, hi, Seven, long-time listener, first-time caller. What I want to know is, will this just mean extra ATK, or are you thinking of shifting? Uh, this is going to be in addition to Fortnite. Like, I guess right now we could be playing Fortnite. Uh, we intended on doing this earlier, but I wanted to do some more testing on the program. Sometimes I think Kyle gets a little impatient with me, like, why don't you just do the thing? But then I also... It's not necessarily, sometimes I'm very indecisive, but sometimes I also am like passing checks in my mind. It's, sometimes it's not indecisiveness, sometimes it's just my process and me getting through it, so. Yeah, well, my biggest thing was, if you wanted to start a podcast, I was like, just do it. Don't worry about the name, don't worry about the logistics of it, just start doing it, and like, the pieces are going to fall together yeah, sure. as they will, yeah. Absolutely. Because I know... I know Gina, and she's very, like, uncommitted to things if she doesn't, like... If I don't want to do them, basically? No, if you, if you like, even making a post on the internet, she's all like, oh, I don't know if I should post this. And I'm like, just fucking post it. <laughs> I will but... literally sit there, and my mind is going in circles. Okay, I want to write something that is like this. But how am I going to word this? And then I reword it five fucking times, I'm sure. <laughs> and then I'm like, you know what? This is stupid. I probably shouldn't post it. And then I don't. Sometimes I don't even end up posting it. Or it sits in like an open tab on my phone until I'm like, okay, I think I know what I want to post now. And then I'll post it like after. So there's some like indecisiveness. I don't I, I don't know what part of my brain to fix to get that to go away. But you know, we're working on it. Um, Ballard had mentioned earlier, and he keeps mentioning it, that you should have me and Tokyo on as a duo, as a omen to the Hood Rat Racing podcast. Oh my god, the Hood Rat Racing? Maybe. We'll see, we'll see what happens. Yeah, start um, with your, your suggested streamers and then figure it out from there. I feel like... Uh... We'll see. Because we'll, we'll, we have Tokyo mm -hmm. on playing Fortnite with us all the time. We could literally just, like, do a Fortnite and yeah. chill type thing there, too. I know. So it, it doesn't hurt I just want to keep the podcast directed towards content creators. creators. And yeah. Tokyo is an amazing friend, and I love him. Um, but Tokyo's it's, not a it's, content yeah, he's not creator. A con do you know what I'm saying? Like, that's, say, yeah. yeah. So that's, that's my only... Um, Definitely reach out to some people that you watch. Like, I know you watch... Like... Uh, you watch people above you and then you you don't want to reach out because you feel like you're overstepping but mm -hmm. Abs absolutely though because um i have reached out to people before and gotten nothing and that's okay because people reach out to me and i give people nothing because <laughs> True. sometimes or i'm overwhelmed lost. with like i get a lot of messages and sometimes i have trouble getting through the messages i'm being paid to answer do you know what i'm saying so yeah. it's it's because i have a lot of messages 
and sometimes just mentally like I have to be in the right mental space to go through my messages and that sounds stupid but if you have ADD and like executive dysfunction like me then you know what I'm talking about Mm -hmm. yeah is this on discord right now no who bangle I'm using um a podcast program called uh Riverside but I just know like uh you enjoy watching American Dad, Dakota. I, like... I, American Dad would be amazing on here, too, because you want to know what his story is? I, I think we kind of briefly talked about it, but apparently he was, like, one of the OG Fortnite, like, big streamers. But he started opening Pokemon cards and something... I, I watched another interview with him where he talked about his Pokemon cards, but something blew up there, and he now he's, like, this huge creator, so... I, and he's so funny. Right now, he, he makes some um, LED signs. He's gonna make me some for my room. I just haven't fully decided what I want yet, but he would be really cool to have on here as well. He does all sorts of funny stuff on his channel, like, um, they do, uh... They watch cops and do, like, a cops bingo sometimes <laughs> on, like, Thursday nights or something silly. And, like, that's fun, you know what I mean? So, he's he's definitely a creator... That would be cool to talk to, even just for the the conversation, you know? Gotcha, gotcha. Opening Pokemon cards is crazy popular. I feel like he sort of was doing it before it got crazy popular, though. Like, he might have been one of the first ones. Uh, I don't, I'm not going to look anything up right now, because... No. And the Ballard yeah. said he... I mean, uh, Behor said he was open Pokemon cards the other night, too. Was he? Where? Is yeah. he in chat saying that? No, no, no. He, he said oh. that when I went in yesterday, yeah. Oh, I see, I see. Gotcha. Okay. Well, these podcasts are probably in the future only going to be around like an hour, maybe an hour and 20, because then we'll have like a 10 minute intro where, you know, I'm going to come and just talk to you guys. And then maybe some sort of, I don't know if there's going to be like an outro. I have no idea. Yeah. So. Don't, don't hold yourself to a time if it's flowing good, but. You don't think so? I, I guess so. Yeah. I guess. And just upload it as is type thing. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, I, I, Ballard, you want to play some games now? <laughs> <laughs> or you want to play some Fortnite? So, well, thanks um, for having me. I I am honored to be number one of whatever probing with Gina. Mm-hmm. You'll always be number one in my heart, baby. <laughs> Just saying. I'm glad we can grow together. It's great. I know. I think it's so fun. Literally. I guess that was one thing we never talked about um, is for me personally... Having somebody by my side who let me be me and do things my way, I suppose. And obviously, sometimes I need suggestions because sometimes my brain does not work right and it's backwards. But, um, like, genuinely having somebody there loving me for who I am and letting me explore who I am through my content, mm -hmm. question mark, is huge because it, in some ways it validates what I'm doing and it gives me that like extra confidence but I I just I genuinely love who I have become and what I do and what I create because of you as well do you know what I mean like I feel like if you were sitting here telling me everything I did was stupid obviously I wouldn't like yeah of course there'd be well, there'd be conflict but I'm literally making content with my best friend and that mm -hmm. I feel like just well on the flip side of that too like how is your mental health after like quitting and going content creation full time? I I feel like that's almost um uh... when I first made the decision to quit, a well, lot I of it you was to quit like a million times too. You did. You told me to quit yeah. like a million times. I was very frustrated at my nine to five job. Now that being said, I was already comfortable with what I was doing um on OF, which is the subscription site for um, my adult content. Um, I was already comfortable at a certain level of income and you were like, well, you know, you could easily do this. So because my job was absolutely stressing me the fuck out. And when I was stressed out at work, I wouldn't even do like it was harder for me to make content I enjoyed because I just was in such a like heavy mental space. Um, and I feel like when I actually quit, it felt good knowing I wouldn't be there anymore. But unfortunately, I was still in um, that comfortable space. And I maintained that for probably the first year, to be honest. I would say, like, I don't, it was probably maybe six months to a year 
Now is probably closer to a year, to be honest. I have a time blindness where, like, I need to associate things with events because I don't, I can't really gauge time on its own. Um, but I got really comfortable, and I feel like that was almost bad for my mental health as well because I just sat in this, like, perpetual uh, routine, perpetual, like, I wasn't pushing, and... It felt very autopilot, I suppose, even though I was, like, creating, but I wasn't pushing creating. And we talk about this all the time because we are full-time content creators. You can't be at 100% or 110 or 120% all the time. Like, you do need downtime. Yeah, for sure. But, like, I wasn't even... I was, like... I feel like I just wasn't even pushing at all. And do I regret it? No, because I I obviously needed the wake up call. I don't know. Like it just, I guess it just is. Yeah, what it is, but... I don't know. It, it, like I feel like regretting anything is always weird because like you can't change it, and it kind of put you on the path of where you are now. So a absolutely, you know what I mean. It, and it's like a perspective shift. Like yeah. I know I could be comfortable doing those things and maintaining a certain level, and but it's. it's... Yeah, it's, it's, it's the growth that's exciting stuff. though too, right? Like, I feel like if you're not growing, you're dying. That's that's actually some sort of a saying. If you're not growing, you're dying. That's why you should always be learning. And I got into a rut of not learning anymore. That's basically I wasn't hmm. pushing myself creatively. I wasn't actively learning something to grow. You know what I mean? So I got caught in that rut. And I think, I, I think you were frustrated with me because you were still working and I was not, but yet I wasn't pushing and you probably felt like I was wasting my time because if the, if it was flipped and I was still working and you were doing YouTube and you were able to maintain like that level of income, uh, you probably would have pushed a lot harder, which I know you would have cause you are very like driven, motivated. So I can sometimes be a lot more emotional and let my, emotions get like a hold of my mental status question mark if that's a thing uh but we're through it and i definitely feel like i've realized that i need to seek this excitement of growth well, like the curiosities and the learnings like i i've put myself back in those shoes yeah and I, allow myself to flow with it the turning point and this is a lesson for everybody was that if you work together <laughs> It works a lot better, so... Oh, my God. Like, the one thing we also didn't talk about on this was... Because this was... I was trying to make it more about you, because that's how my... I want my podcast yeah, to Yeah, we run. just kind of segued it into you, but so... <laughs> because we are content creators together, you make your own separate. I do make my own separate, but we also make some content together now. And we have been working together behind the scenes a lot more than we ever did, really. Um, we always just... We always were able to be around each other like we are around each other all the time i feel like a typical married couple would have each other killed by now <laughs> because yeah. the amount we see each other we are literally almost glued at the hip like he can go do his own thing and i can go do my own thing but literally we're around each other all the time so it is a little bit different that way but when we genuinely started saying okay you take care of this i'm do this let's work together that's when things really took off for us and enabled us to even do that even more and give us more freedom. So mm -hmm. right. now we're in like a very comfortable space, like creating it's no stress It's do whatever you want, have fun, enjoy it. Yes. And I think that's the place we needed to get to after the, we quit our full-time jobs. So we quit our full-time jobs. There was like a lull of like, oh, this is difficult. It's tough. And I think you're supposed to go to that place first. Probably, to be honest. Like, I feel yeah. like the first couple of years is like, because, okay, if you get into a car accident, your body goes through shock, right? Like, you, you get adrenaline, your body goes through shock, and like, the way you process things is a little bit different. So I feel like quitting the job you have expectations like okay i need to do these things and i feel like because it's new because it's something new that you're striving for you kind of go through that same maybe not necessarily shock but adjustment you know what i'm saying 
And yeah. I, I feel like that always is going to take time. Unless you're already like, I don't know, Mr. Beast and have like a million subscribers. But if you're wanting to quit your job before a million subscribers and build on from that, like if that's the leap you're looking to take, it's worth it. But you have to know that there's like a shock period afterwards, basically. You know yeah, there's mean? definitely like a, you, you kind of have to hit bottom before you can go up. That that's basically sense. what it felt like. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> and I mean, anyways yeah <laughs> we're rambling on now uh we're in a good spot content creation is awesome it's fun and highly recommend it mm, y'all are goals thank you squanto <laughs> just do what feels natural yes uh ballard made a fair point he's like you probably want to have some sort of a limit because you don't yeah. want it to go like five hours but i think we're like two hours in yeah, this um, is comfortable time i think and there was there was definitely some fluff in this too because when i started and everything else mm -hmm. um and then our little tangents which are fine but um, well, once again, thanks for having me on your podcast. You're very welcome. Thank you for being my very first guest. It was very nice to meet you. Where can everybody find you? I probably should have started the podcast with that so that it's always in the beginning. I got to make note of that. Uh, where can people find you, Kyle? I am Boosted Lifestyle on YouTube. Or you can find me. It's Boosted Lifestyle YT on everything else, I think. Okay. Do you have like a main link or what? Uh, no, I don't. I don't oh. have a website that links out. Oh, okay there you go well thank you um for can you leave and i still talk to chat before i go i to... can leave i can hang up on you oh well bye love you love you see you bye, bye. see ya <laughs> have fun are you staying on now, like are you streaming uh, afterwards yes well i feel like we should that's what i was going to talk to chat about but i'll just don't hang up yet okay also when you hang oh. up you cannot close the window because you have to let it finish uploading okay well so... i'm gonna leave and then i'll listen on Okay, perfect. Okay, all right, bye, love you. Let me see, bye. Okay, so what I think I'm gonna do uh, for the rest of the evening is I'm gonna take like a 20 minute break, uh, go schmuck some weed, and also uh, maybe Kyle and I will order some food. I don't know, I know he's got chicken in the fridge that he made, but like, if we're gonna be playing some games, maybe we'll get some food, and I'm gonna start my regular Twitch stream, and we're gonna play some Fortnite. So how's that sound? Sound fun or why? You know? All right. <laughs> I, I'm really curious to see how this program's gonna work, but I'm gonna stop the recording. It's gonna stop the live. Podcast was my fave. Oh, thank you, Danny. You know what? Like, did I click stop? Oh no, did I click it? I didn't. Okay, I think we're still streaming. Uh, go cram some food down your cocksucker. True. Danny needs to be on too. I was literally just thinking that. Danny, I would love to also have you on my uh, podcast. Please and thank you. I really love... Is this going to sound creepy? I really love hearing about people's journeys. Like, how did you become you? You know what I mean? Like, how can we understand you and what you create better? Um sometimes some of the past information is irrelevant i suppose but i don't know like everything that's ever happened to you is a building block of where you are now and i feel like asking creators that is so interesting to me so danny please would you be on my podcast sometime police thank you danny i appreciate that so much were you paying attention to if I was breathing out my hoo-ha or not? I would love to. Yay! And then we should play some Fortnite together. But I do have to... I was looking. I honestly... Sometimes I sometimes I did think about it. But I'm a terror... Like, uh, breathing through my mouth is going to be hard. Anyways, I'm going to end the recording so that I can figure out how to publish it to Spotify. I will be back probably in about like 20 minutes around 9 o'clock and we will start some Fortnite games. I love you guys. Thank you. I don't know. I don't even think I can raid or anything, but anyways, I'll see you guys in a little bit. Okay? Bye. Probing with Gina. Uh. <laughs>